Hey guys, so today I'm going to be sharing with you my top tips to budget as an auxiliar. I was an auxiliar from 2018 to 2019, so I'm not doing it this year. But I do have a lot of tips that I used and also my friends that they shared with me um, of how we kept up with our budget and stayed within our boundaries as an auxiliar because it can be kind of difficult at times. So if you're interested, stay tuned and don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and hit subscribe down below. I also have a lot of other videos of tips and like a day in the life of an auxiliar video and other things about the program. So make sure you check those out too. I'll leave links down below and I'll also like post links in the history. But yeah, let's get right into it. My first tip would be to come with savings. Do not come with the bare minimum. Make sure you have enough money saved, not only because there are tons of expenses that you will have as soon as you get to the country, this will be like the deposit for your apartment, first month's rent, transportation to get this get to the city that you're living in because a lot of times you're placed like not in the heart of a city but kind of in a pueblo. So it's how to get there and move your luggage and all of that. Uh, make sure you plan for all of that. Also, you have to get your NIE, your TA, like all your empadramiento. All of these legal bureaucratic um, things cost money so definitely put aside a few hundred um, for those alone and then yeah just make sure you have extra money um, as soon as I got to Madrid I was robbed I I was actually an auxiliar in Benidorm uh, which is Comunidad Valencia Valencia region but I was in Madrid and I went to buy a lock for my uh, locker in the hostel and I got robbed they took about two hundred dollars in cash um so that could happen too so just plan ahead for all of that my second tip would be to get a credit card before you come to spain or arrive in spain so i have the chase sapphire reserve card i'll show you guys here this is it and it is actually one of the best credit cards for travel this and I think the Capital One are really good. They have the Chase Sapphire Preferred and the Chase Sapphire Reserved. The Reserved is the higher one. I upgraded to that one. Um, my credit score is good and I was able to get it. Um, but do get one of those. You get double the points on travel and dining, I believe. And you don't have fees when you're in country. So that makes a huge difference because if you're using a debit card or a credit card that doesn't isn't about travel, um, you'll get charged a lot of fees like for every transaction when I use my debit card I get charged three dollars so make sure you plan for that and have a card that you can use you will open a bank account when you're there but also I'm earning points with this card um, I got 55,000 bonus points as soon as I signed up that paid for a full trip to Brazil and now I have about 55,000 bonus points or points that I've racked up um, since I've had it. I've had it for a few years, but that's another like almost a thousand dollars that I get just for having this credit card and using it. But also another note on that, do not fall into credit card debt. Pay off your credit card as soon as you get billed. Do not fall into debt, especially as an auxiliar because it is really hard and difficult to get out of it. So just be careful of all of that. My third tip would be to sign up to teach English online before you arrive in Spain. So there are different websites that you can teach English online to kids in China. Um, there's GoGo Kid, there's VIP Kid, and there's also one called Cambly, which is you uh, have like conversations with adults who are trying to learn English. Um, I would definitely say do that prior to coming to country because you're going to be flustered you're gonna be in a new place when you're in country so it's just easier to get it done at home in your comfort zone you can get paid up to twenty dollars an hour um, for doing that you need a bit of a setup a few props and then yeah they give you the lessons you don't have to plan anything you just have to kind of review them before you give the class and you can make good money that way especially if you feel like you're falling behind in your budget and you also are your own boss in a way so you can choose how many classes you're giving per week and um, put your availability every week I think I didn't personally do it but I have a lot of friends who did so definitely do that before you arrive in Spain my tips for when you 
are in Spain, when you just arrive, find cheap housing. So yes, it may be nicer to spend an extra 100 euros and you live in this area that is a tiny bit nicer than the other one, but trust me, that adds up. And when you're only making, so in my region, I was making a thousand euros a month. I know in Madrid you make a thousand euros a month, but the other regions you make maybe like 700 to 800, I believe. So a hundred euros a month extra just to like have a little bit nicer of an apartment or a little bit nicer of a location really could hurt you, especially if you're planning on traveling a lot. Um, I would say save that money, get roommates for sure. 100% you need roommates and um, yeah, find cheap housing is really crucial. Another tip for when you're there is don't travel every weekend. I know it's tempting because you have three days off, you want to go somewhere close or new every weekend, but you'll travel every weekend for the first few months and then after that you're going to be bootstrapping like you won't have any extra money to even like go out in the city that you live in. So plan your trips, go the places that you want to go. I traveled a bunch when I was in Ox, but plan them according to like Maybe you have an extra holiday so you can take a four day trip instead of a three three day or two day trip. Um, plan around like when you're getting paid and make sure you have enough money. Don't go and spend it all um, at the beginning of uh, when you get there because you have savings or you think you'll be fine because sometimes they're late paying you. Like when I was in Ox, they didn't pay us for the first time until December. So we had to go three months without pay, which was pretty scary, but Luckily, I came with a lot of savings, so I was okay, but I know some people didn't and they were struggling, so just be careful of all of that. My next tip would be to go grocery shopping and meal prep. So not only will this save you a lot of money, but it also keeps you healthier. So I know when you get to Spain, you think wine is so cheap, tapas are so cheap, they have menu del dia, which is like 10 euros for a huge meal, but if you think about it, it can add up. Um, Mercadona is my favorite grocery store. Oh, I miss Mercadona. But Mercadona, fruterias, go to fruterias. You will get so many fruits and vegetables and other items for so cheap. I would go there and I would spend two euros and have like so much food for like the whole week and it would be two euros. So definitely find out where your local fruteria is and Mercadona is great prices, great food, quality, and I feel like their their ingredients and just everything is so much better than here in the US, but do that and you will save a lot of money. And also, when you get there in the first month, determine approximately what your expenses will be. So how much are you paying for rent and utilities? How much are you gonna be paying um, generally for groceries? Leisure is important to also take into account um, transportation, take buses and blah blah cars, don't take Ubers or taxis or things like that because you will spend so much money and it goes fast. I determine all of your expenses and then kind of gauge that depending on how much you're getting paid, subtract that and then how much you have left over. If you feel like you are going to use up all of your monthly income, which could happen because you don't get paid a whole lot and if you are used to like living in America and like spending money like people do here, you might not have enough. So maybe try and pick up an extra um, lesson, private lesson. You can get private lessons. Um, typically, I would charge 15 euros an hour, but you can do anywhere between 10 and 20 euros per hour, I think. And that's a great way to make friends, meet people around the city, get practice your Spanish also, and uh, make some money and they pay you in cash usually I guess so that also is helpful when it comes to traveling I did travel a lot and I have um, other videos on travel tips like budget travel tips and stuff but I would say stay in hostels and couch surf when you can I couch surf for the first time this past year when I was uh, an ox and I loved it I met amazing people I had great experiences I got to learn how to cook food in Rome with a true Roman and in Greece with Greek people and I made friendships that will last forever and it was just amazing so I would definitely recommend doing that. You can save so much money by doing that and hostels are also great to meet people and save money. Those are basically my budget tips 
for being an auxiliar in Spain, it can be hard sometimes budgeting and because you're in a new place, you want to spend money, you want to have new experiences, but trust me, live within your means, you can still have those experiences and also don't go out for wine every night. I know it's so tempting, but just don't do it. Get a bottle at home, maybe have some friends over and enjoy it that way. Bottles are like a euro, you'll save a lot of money. Yeah, I hope you found these tips helpful. Don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and hit subscribe down below for more travel tip videos and vlogs and such. And if you have any more questions about being an ox, uh, send me your requests or just ask me in the comments below and I'll make sure to get back to you. Bye.